All right, Liberty Gray back again to teach you how to teach your clients how to perform the swing. So I typically start with the GS style swing because that is involves less body parts, really, per se, or less joint action than the GS style swing. So, of course, you're going to teach your clients to perform or approach the bell in an athletic stance. So that would be a shoulder width stance, the outside of your feet to approximately the outside uh, width of your shoulders. Um, a lot of people will want to try and get this very wide stance because they think that they've got this kettlebell they need to swing between their legs. And if they don't step wide, they're afraid they're going to take out a knee or take out a groin or something like that. But we have to teach them that if they take too wide of a stance, they're really diverting their energy outwards instead of backwards. So by getting the stance a little bit narrower, just so, enough so you can get the kettlebell between your three legs, you're going to have to hike the, the hips backwards. And you're creating a lot of tension or loading in the hamstrings, glutes, and the posterior chain. Whereas if I'm in a, a very wide stance, a lot of times people really just want to go up and down. So we want to try and get away from that by, again, getting into what I call an athletic stance or your wheels underneath your car. Then approaching the kettlebell, so many uh, of your clients will want to reach forward and grab their bell out in front of them. So what that does is places a lot of strain on the lumbar spine. So if you can imagine, any time that you have a weight out in front of you and you're bending forward, this part of your body is going to be taking a lot of the hit, a lot of strain. So what we'd like them to do is get used to placing the bell in between their feet or back by their heels. So they're forced to get down into a full squatting position to pick up the bell. So reiterate safety always to your, to your clients. All right, so we're going to have them position the bell back by their feet. Again, we're talking about that grip that we just covered earlier, a light fingertip grip. So have your clients, uh, if you need to, we can do a towel demonstration where you wrap a towel through the hand of the bell and they use that as an extension of their hands so they're not used to death gripping the bell. You'll notice a lot of clients, uh, because they'll be nervous at their first intro workshop, you'll notice a lot of tension in their traps or their upper chest area. So just kind of reiterate that the hands are only placed on the bell just light enough to hang on so they don't drop it. All right, from here we're going to talk about how they're just going to start penduling the bell from the hips. So the arms are going to stay very relaxed like we talked about. And the arms are going to stay connected with the body. So many of your clients will want to try and do a front raise or a thousand front raises as they're performing the swing. We don't want them to separate the arms, otherwise they're going to overuse the forearms and create a lot of stress injuries. So a lot of tendonitis, if you have some clients that come complain to you, oh, I've got some elbow pain or some arm pain, then they're lifting with the bell. So you can create the analogy of having them place some uh, towels underneath their armpits and don't drop the towel, they have to squeeze that or don't let them let their elbows come disconnected from the body. They want to create that mobility by bending at the hip and letting the shoulders lower. So don't have them feel like they have to raise the bell way out in front of them. This is actually more of an advanced move for your clients who know how to keep their shoulder within the shoulder capsule and not let the arms extend or the upper back round. So by creating this connection of the body with the upper arm and the elbow, they're really almost soldering that in place. So this is all becoming one unit. And then they won't be tempted to overuse the smaller muscles. We're still focusing again on the larger muscles of the core and the posterior chain. All right, so the GS swing, you're going to work with them until they get this right. Don't let them leave the room until they keep their elbows connected to their body. All right, so just bending forward and penduling at the hips. 
very important that they also reach backwards with their booty. So some of your clients are going to complain of low back pain still, and that is because they are not actively reaching back like they are sitting in a chair. So I really like to use a chair as a learning tool, and a chair and or a ball. So I'm going to actually use this stool here. And I'm going to have them practice. This can be done with a simple folding chair or any kind of tool. I'm going to have them practice sitting by bending at the hip joint first. So they're just going to sit down and stand up, bending at the hips. Go ahead and sit on the chair. Arms can be out front for balance. Knees move secondary or incidentally. And then again, stand up, first motion starting at the hip. And the knees are just there being coming a hinge joint. They're not moving forward. They're staying in line. My shins are in line with my ankles. And they're just moving on a hinge. Then I have my clients progress once they get into this motion here into a little bit snappier. So it's going to be like a touch and go. So you'll see a lot of people, women especially, because of the Q angle of our hips, where as they're squatting, their knees are kind of concaving like so. So we want to do some drills with them and help them get their knees to track over their toes. So have them imagine that they're pushing outward with their knees. If their knees are caving in, they have to forcefully push outwards as they're sitting down. You can also put a band around and the outside of their knees or just underneath their knees and they have to push outward against the band as they're squatting. So once you get the functionality of the knees tracking over the toes and get them moving at the hips, then you want to progress into that touch and go. So now they're just coming down to where their booty just touches the chair and standing back up. So they're not really putting all their weight in that sitting motion. And as you can see, this resembles a lot of the hard style swing. Once they've got that technique down, then we talk about hip extension. And really extension is when the hips are pressed forward and the glutes are locked tight. So this is the top motion of our swing. And it's when so many people are lacking in stability. So you'll see a lot of people a timing imbalance where they're pulling with their hands. The hips are coming through, but this is what their pelvis looks like at the top of the movement. And if you don't have a trained eye to pick up, my pelvis is actually tipped forward, like so, anterior tilt. We want to tuck the pelvis under, and that is going to create a great foundation for the top of your bell. A lot of stability, I have to keep my core engaged, my abs are tight, and my glutes are tight, pretending like you're pinching a quarter. So I call this standing tall like a Russian. So we're going to teach your client to do that touch and go motion with that extension at the top. Sometimes I use the analogy that it's the, the John Travolta hip thrust. I get a, kind of a kick out of that. So you're doing your touch and go and extending. So your hip thrust here to here. All right, then I talk about the breathing technique. So the breathing also follows, as you're, if you're a weightlifter, it's the exhale and the hard part of the exercise. So as I'm coming up and I'm really engaging that muscle, firing that muscle, I'm also exhaling and bracing the abdomen. So inhale, exhale. All right, so that's how I start my clients out in learning the swing. Then I take their chair away from them, and I have them go back to this GS style swing. So again, positioning the bell back by the heels or back by the feet, having them do a hike to get the kettlebell, loose fingertip grip on the bell, arms connected to the torso, and have them start doing that bend, lowering the shoulders. That's going to be something that you'll find a lot of people want to stay too upright so their back swing won't be very deep. So they almost need to come down horizontal. You can place a clipboard behind them and have them touch the clipboard. 
So you're going to place it like a foot behind, so they have to actually hike the bell very, very deep to get it to touch, and then they get that audio feedback of it hitting the clip.